A lot of times we feel that our present situation is our last situation. Whether it be on the job or in our marriage or in our finances, in social, economic, physical situations, we feel, well, it is what it is. You know, I remember the first time I heard that uh, statement, I was on a job and an employer was asking a young lady uh, about the status of her work. And she said, it is what it is. And the boss asked her, said, what does that mean? She says, well, what you see is what I got. And that's all I got. And I really don't care about anything other than, you know, I have produced what I am capable of producing. And I looked at her because she was disgusted and she felt that she had done everything that she was going to do and the situation was right there. You deal with it whatever way you want to deal with it. And again, as, as Christians, we're not supposed to feel that all hope is lost. We're not supposed to feel as though the situation is, 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 is there's no hope. You know, there's, we're, 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 we're right there. You know, like the children of Israel were standing right there between the Red Sea was on one side and Pharaoh was on the other. I'm sure somebody said, well, it is what it is. We finna die now. You know, I'm gonna drown to death or they gonna, they, gonna, they, gonna, they gonna stab me with these, these spears. But see, this is where the New Testament church brings faith in. Now faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. And so we, we make it so that in our minds, I don't see it, but I believe that I, I ask for it, I shall receive it. So that counsels out, it is what it is. If you want to say that, then you say it is what it is for right now. Because we know that we have things that have been already planned and predestined for us. And so our present situation or as the scriptures say, this light of fiction is just for a moment. Or weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So we can't just hang on that cliche and allow it to sit in our spirit. Because once something is in the spirit, you have to purge it out. It is what it is. You know, 95% of the time, I, I, I polled somebody and I asked them, how do I get you to believe? And they stated that, well, if they have been repetitiously told something, they would believe it to a certain degree. But there has to be trust involved. So how do I get you to trust? That is an individual process where there's a relationship that is built. And this is why we need the word. The word which was made for us. This is why we need Jesus. And this is why we need a good dose of the word. Because the word told you to trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not to thy own understanding. But in all thy words acknowledge him and he shall direct that path. So how do I believe I am repetitiously told something? How do I trust? I have built a relationship to where I can feel that this person is telling me something that is not false. And when you have belief and when you have trust, then you have a combination that will allow you to have faith. And so in having faith, it is what it is. It's something you ain't going to say no more. You say, I believe I'll, I believe I'll run on. See what the end is going to be. I believe I'll run on and see what he has for me. A lot of times we 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 look at the situation. And situ some situations do look hopeless. They are spoken hopelessly. But as the believer, we have to have faith enough to believe that he is. 
a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And after we've sought the Lord and we've given it to him, we laid our burdens at the altar. We, we, we cast our cares on him for he careth for us. Then we have to believe that the Lord will provide. And you know, I love to quote the uh, 23rd number of some verse 1. It's my daughter Sierra's favorite. Which the Lord states in his word, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And he gives us a blank check to put want for what? Whatever that need is. And so if we are trusting and depending on the Lord and he's our shepherd, it ain't it is what it is. It is that God is able to do exceedingly and abundant above all that I can ask or think. It is that he is able to supply all my need according to his riches and glory. It is he sent his word to heal them and deliver them from all their all their destruction. It is he is able to keep me from falling and to present hey to present me faultless. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is in a sense that for right now. But we know that our God is infinite and that he doesn't dwell in our 24 hour, seven day a week. Uh, 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 time span. He doesn't dwell in the 365 uh, uh, days in the year, but he dwells in infinity. And so whenever he wants to call a thing to stop and whatever he wants to cause a thing to pause and whenever he wants to cause a thing to, to, to move on, then he can call it and the devil got to get back. And this is why we need the Holy Ghost. If you look at uh, the 22nd verse, of what I read, he said, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And when he got the, when they got the Holy Ghost, they got power. Acts 1 and 8 says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you're going to be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the other most parts of there. Why is the Holy Ghost important? Because the scripture tells us that the Holy Ghost is, is, is leads us and guides us into all truth. So again, it is what it is, is not the confession. Should not be the cliche. Should not be the thought of the believer. Because we have so much word that kind of acts it. He tells it, he said, I present to you life and death. Choose you life on today. Scripture tell us the Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that coincides with it is what it is. Because see, Satan has presented himself. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Which gives us again hope that there is a brighter tomorrow. You know, I thank God for the word, which is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. And I continuously can show you throughout scripture and throughout testimony that it is what it is should not be the confession of the believer. Amen. As, as I curtail uh, and, 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 and in our session, I just want you to know that God is able to fix whatever the problem is on today, but we have to give it to him and we have to leave it there. We have to give it to him. And we have to leave it there. Amen. I want to thank you for listening to another session of Cultivating the Crop. Where I, like Apollos, is watering the saints on today. Uh, if you have missed any of the teaching, you can go on YouTube and search ttbministries at gmail.com. Again, I'm on YouTube. And that... Uh, Search engine is ttbministries at gmail.com. And man, if there is a need on today, can I just compel you to take it to the Lord? Take whatever it is to the Lord. Whether you think it's minute or it is great, it's hard for you to bear. I dare you to take it to the Lord. I, ask, I dare you to ask the Lord to fix your problem. God, he's still able to do exceedingly and abundant. He's still a savior. He's still a healer. He's still a deliverer. He's still a keeper. He's still a way maker. He's still somebody that you can lean on. He's still a confidant on today. And so as we confess our faults, as we confess those things that we need to confess, 
We got to pray, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you touch all of those that are listening. Lord, we ask that something been, something that was said, Lord, enlighten the believer on today. Satan, we take authority over you right now in the name of Jesus. We know that God is a still a healer. He's still in the healing and the saving business. God, for all of those that are just a little burned down during this time of the year, God, we ask that you will just touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Lift, bow down his God. Fill pockets, God. Somebody upset because they didn't win the lotto, God. But if they got you, they've already won, God. Lord, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, I ask that you cover this nation, cover the world with your blood, God. Lord, allow the believers to obtain Holy Ghost boldness right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you because we know that you've already fixed it, God. You've already fixed us, God. You've already taken it, God. We just know that we're looking for the manifestation of the things that we ask for. We thank you and we praise you for who you are, where you are, what you're doing, how you're doing. You said in all things, give thanks. But this is the will of God concerning us. So God, we just lift our hands on today and we tell you thank you. Lord, we thank you for all things. Amen.